Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project Magnetic Reversal News and Shinrin Yoku, bringing you a Grand Solar Minimum Update Sunday, February 20th, around 9.30 p.m. Mountain Time, 2022. I know it's late, but that doesn't prevent the models from showing heavy snow in the south and the Midwest. Take a look at these models. That's the big story. More than a foot of snow falls in parts of the Cascades. The Washington State Department of Transportation is asking drivers to take it slow over the passes or they can kiss their <whistles> keep calm. It is boom time. Will, well, wind will usher in colder temperatures, rain and snow in Arizona this week, including, well, some of the global warming goodness on Thursday. We'll get to the models in just a minute. Minnesota weather, two-day storm could drop, drop a foot of snow in central Minnesota. Say it ain't soda. Wait a minute. She's looking pretty. Anyway, several days of bitter cold temperatures and lingering snow headed our way in Colorado. Near or below zero expected in the system for many regions. Below zero. And we're going to get to the thermodynamics in just a minute. As Park City could see up to six inches of snow through Tuesday morning. It's a party time at the Lodge. Millions of Americans will be forced into an involuntary polar plunge this week. And this forecaster dressed like Dorothy to give you the news. Holy macaroni. Let's take a look. After a mild end of the weekend in many states, Old Man Winter will make its comeback as we start off the new work week. Temperatures will be 10 to 20 degrees below average over the northern tier states by Monday morning. And we're about to take a look at that, so stay tuned. Here's your thermodynamics forecast, and we're looking at the latest run on the GFS model. And here we are sitting today, Sunday, fun day. And just take a look at this polar Arctic air up here in the, in the magenta and here over in eastern Canada. And well, just all the snow makes driving oh. a little dicey. It's great news for skiers and snowboarders. No, it isn't. It's not good news for you because we just shut you down. All right, let's walk the GFS through here. And you can see the polar plunge taking shape tonight and dropping down in Monday morning. Here is Monday as this Arctic air, minus 30, hits tonight. Hello, Ontario. It's pressing on you. It's coming to get you. And then it will not stop. It will continue to drop south including North Dakota, South Dakota, Montana, Wyoming. Take a look. Nebraska, it's about to kiss your ass. And it's going to dip. Here is your Tuesday night. Wow, look at those temperatures. Minus 10, minus 10, minus 10. Yes, you're looking at cold that's going to dip deeper Wednesday. This is when the main storm takes Force and the front, obviously, you can see is going to be happening right here on that temperature differential. That's where the heavy snow is going to occur as this plume ever pushes further south. Texas, the nexus of the Schmexus, is going to be in those freezing temps for days. Deep temps. Here's 18 up in the panhandle. 18, 14. Are you kidding me? And look at these temperatures. Kansas, 2. Minus 19 in Wisconsin. Minus 27 in Minnesota. Minus 22 in North Dakota, St. Anne's Soda. There's going to be wind chill warnings. Epic cold. Look at this. By February 26th, the cold in Texas drops all the way into the Gulf of Mexico. Look at these freeze. About to have the, uh, the second iguana apocalypse of the season as we approach March. Look at these cold temperatures dropping all the way down to the southeast. At the end of February, we promised you a February to remember. And here it is. The iguana apocalypse at the end. Right there. Boom. Look at that. 41 degrees in South Florida. March 1st. 36 degrees in South Florida. March 1st. Oh, my God. And it will not let up. March 2nd, it's going to be cold in Florida and in the Northeast. By March, the first week. Of March, the Northeast is going to think it's February or January or somewhere they don't want to be. Minus 14 in Central PA, March 3rd. Heads up, Northeast, you're about to be blasted by the global warming goodness. Hazardous weather expected this up upcoming week. What a tweak. Shut up, Al. Get in your home. I'm sick of this guy. 
He's been underground for a week, and, and he just is relentless. He says it's spring, ding, ding. Heavy snow and icing are likely from a winter storm across the upper Midwest into the Great Lakes. And this storm may also produce severe thunderstorms, locally heavy rainfall from the southern plains to Tennessee Valley. The, the severe weather in the southeast looks ridiculous leading up to the storm. So take heed. Now, meanwhile, a system will drop down the west coast into the southwest with rain and snow. Ho, ho. Critical fire weather risk continues in the Southern Plains. It's insane. North Texas here in the Magenta, that's where the high winds and the fire weather is at. But winter storm watches and warnings for 10 states up in the northern tier. We're not even queer, but this is the forecast. And let's check out the GFS model right now, running through you. But we're going to just bring it back here to Sunday, fun day. Here's your Monday morning. As the snow drops down through Montana and Washington State, Oregon is going to get the best package here through Tuesday morning as that snow clobbers us in Colorado Tuesday. That will be our lose day where we're going to be picking up 16 inches in this region. Heavy snow up in eastern Canada. Moving into Wednesday, that storm is going to pick up speed. It's going to create havoc as the severe weather threat hits the southeast on Wednesday and Thursday. Snow behind the front is going to start to spread from Oklahoma to Arkansas, southern Missouri. Take a look at that. Southern Illinois, southern Indiana, far western Kentucky could be getting plucky, but a heavy 16-inch band moving across through Pennsylvania through the weekend. And that, well, those are the models. Colorado western U.S. mega drought, the driest in 1,200 years. Well, that was the last bond cycle. And where do you think we are now? Yes, things are chiming up, including average snow mass for the Northern Hemisphere at record territory, about 400 gigatons above the average and still three weeks out from the peak. Two and a half, actually. I do digress. Now, earthquake activity at the Reykjanes volcano has increased 48 hours ago and has been up and down in ebbs and flows for months since the end of the eruption. But we're coming over here at the seismicity, and you can see how 48 hours ago, how jiggy that peninsula was getting. So we're keeping a close eye on it as it has gone quiet in the last 24 hours. Hours of powers. Seismic update. The world is rocking in moderate territory, five magnitude, 4.5 and above, everywhere along the ring of fire. Hours of powers. Nothing significant. Most recent quake, 5.2. Just well, that's in New Zealand, for goodness sakes. Let's see if that's on land. And it is. So that could be quite a rumbler. It's only at a depth of 30 kilometers. I'm sure that was felt around. There should be some, well, people with their panties in a bunch, especially after a 4.5 and a 4.6 and now a 5.2. Is this a, an uptick in Rapehu? Anyone knows. We're keeping a close eye on it for you. Worldwide Volcano News Update, Fuego, Torialba, Nevados de Ruiz, and Sabancaya. Let's show more. Now, we've had some interesting uptick in Torialba today in Costa Rica. Small, short-lived eruption. And that's my neighbor's boyhood home. No, actually, that's where he has a permaculture farm, and he's currently residing right now. Heads up, you know who you are. <clears throat> and one other point of note I want to bring to your attention here, if we could just show more, yes, there has been an uptick here in Aoba, or Ambe Volcano in Vanuatu, which is just west of Tonga, say it in Tonga, but it is, and there's been some puffing and passing for weeks there on Himawari 8, and let's just go over to Himawari and see if we can check one of those puffs. So here we are over at the color Himawari Loop, Australia to the left. Vanuatu here, Fiji here, here is Tonga. And you want to keep an eye on this island strip. This is where Ambe and Aoba are situated. And earlier today, there were some streamers coming off of these mountains, which are volcanoes. And there is no streamers coming now. Maybe, no, it's all quiet on the Western Front. So good news coming from the Himawari Loop, clearly. Now, let's take a look at space weather. We had a sea flare about 26 hours ago. There it is. It's not geo-effective, meaning it was shot away from Earth, so nothing to worry about. Coronal hole stream coupled also 23 hours ago, same time that that flare went off. Hmm, I wonder if there's a connection there. 
but this is due to a coronal whole stream coupling. No other space weather in the future. As you can see, the three-day geomagnetic forecast is quite quiet. All is quiet on the Western Front. Now let's talk about Earth. Is Earth smart? Well, it might actually be an organism. Have you ever thought, thought, of it, thought about it that way? Well, we have. And this article in The Atlantic, which is a total shark factory, actually makes sense. And almost a century ago, the revolutionary idea of the biosphere gained a foothold in science. And we all know and accept that there is a biosphere where different organisms or creatures or climatic regions affect biologically other regions. So everything is sort of, sort of a permaculture principle here where one system is helping another and so on and so forth. But is it an intelligent being? The tapestry of actions of every micro, plant, and animal on the planet or the biosphere has a profound implication for our understanding of planetary evolution, including the idea of consciousness. Is the Earth conscious? Do you even care? Leave a, leave a comment below. Now, the latest galaxy ever, the largest galaxy ever discovered, baffles scientists. <laughs> they have no idea how it got so huge. Well, how about this? The entire cosmological standard model is garbage. Scientists are money funders that are simply writing articles to get paid so they can retire. Those are the facts. Welcome to the channel. Ha! King Tut's meteorite dagger has a mystery origin. Now, this scientific argument has been going on for quite some time. Now, the dagger was found decades ago before we even knew what science was. But King Tut's meteorite dagger has a mystery. And that mystery will be solved on Magnetic Reversal News in the next 24 hours. The paper, paper just coming out, the manufacture and origin of the Tutankhamun meteoric iron dagger, 11th February 2022, has got some, well, amazing revelations that I'm sure you'll want to hear. So tune in. The 3,400-year-old tablet. Scientists don't think it's from Egypt, this dagger. And the meteorite was from far, far away. Hello. That's a boom to knowledge. I hope we titillated you. And we've, well, I hope we motivated you to go over to our other channel, Magnetic Reversal News, and become a subscriber and watch the podcast as it happens. Tonight, we had some problems with our future guest, Mr. Nyquist, which we will be doing interviews with tomorrow night. So thanks to all our one-time donors. Thanks to all the heroes that share this video. Thanks to you that have supported the channel for six years. And every single one of you that shares this video. That's all I can say. Major platforms like YouTube, where we have huge followings, and Facebook have become corrupted. Yes. By censors and schmucktards that think that they control the narrative. But we have developed dozens, actually 18, backdoors. And those include Rumble. BitChute. Rumble is our number one platform. Parler is our number one social media. We have half a million followers on 36 platforms. If you can't find us, you haven't been looking. That's a boom. Be safe. All links are below. If you still, six years later, don't know where that area is, where the links are, please ask your children. Ask your neighbor. Figure out how to do your own homework your own research, double check the articles, double check the facts, double check the links. And what you'll find is that everything you've been told by mainstream media has been nonsense. And that's boom. Be safe. Until next time.